Welcome once again to Dr. Wren's Anatomy and Physiology. Um, for this short video, I want to do the anatomy of the skin. This is one of the models that's in my lab that we use for learning and testing. Uh, so I'd like to go through some of its anatomy. Major layers of skin. This is the epidermal layer. It goes all the way down to these little boxy cells here. Epidermis. The dermis runs between here and here. And you'll notice that within the dermis, we have most of the accessory organs like sweat glands um, and receptors and hair follicles. And then hypodermis would be down here. Now, more recently in most of the texts, they tell you that the skin extends from the epidermis and through the dermis and that stuff underneath it is not part of the skin. And in old texts, they called this the hypodermis or um, lowest layer of the skin. Just know that this is hypodermis and that it's mostly made up of adipose tissue. So those are the three major layers. Um, of the epidermis, we have five layers to know. So up here in the epidermis, the outermost hardened, dead layer of skin is the stratum corneum. And then on this model, they have this white line which represents the stratum lucidum. Stratum lucidum is only found on thick skin, but this model is, actually represents more the kind of skin that you'd see on the back of your hand, which would be thin skin, rather than the palm of your hand, which would be thick skin. So just kind of a reminder that this is supposed to be thin skin, but they showed, a, they showed you the stratum um, lucidum just to be able to put it on the model. So the white line is the stratum lucidum. And the pink line below it is stratum granulosum. In this location, histologically, under the microscope, you would see cells that are a bit more granular when they're stained. So that's stratum granulosum. Underneath that is stratum spinosum. And then at the very bottom layer is stratum basal. And in this model, they did represent the cells that are in the basal layer, but the rest of them they just colored in. So you got to look at histologically to see what the cells really look like. Also on this basal layer, I love that they have uh, melanocytes. That's what these cells are supposed to be, melanocytes. And let's go on to some of the accessory organs of the skin. Um, hair shaft, hair shaft, and hair shaft. And all three of these hair shafts are inside of hair follicles. This one's completely enclosed, no cross section. That's a hair follicle. This is another hair follicle, and they've got cross section down here for the, for the parts of the hair. So that's still a hair follicle. Um, this one, they've done a complete cross section. The pink line around the outside is the hair follicle, whereas the brown part on the inside is the hair shaft. Other structures dealing with the hair follicle, we have erector pili muscle, the muscle that leads to goosebumps. We have sebaceous glands, sebaceous glands. And on this follicle, sebaceous glands. Um, sweat glands. These are all eccrine sweat glands. And the way you know that is that they are relatively small. And they have ducts that lead to the surface of the skin, not to a hair follicle. So this is an eccrine sweat gland, an eccrine sweat gland inside here going up, an eccrine sweat gland here, an eccrine sweat gland here. For receptors, Pacinian corpuscles are deeper, and they're these kind of largish ones that have um, layers, kind of like an onion. So Pacinian corpuscle, Pacinian corpuscle, Pacinian corpuscle. Up closer to the surface, um, in the papillary regions, the, 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 the dermal papilla are these convolutions up here close to the surface. Um, where the basal layer meets the dermis. Basal layer of the epidermis meets the dermis. This is a Meissner's corpuscle, also known as a tactile corpuscle. Not to be confused with this one on the other end, which is called a Krauss's end bulb. The difference between the two on the model you can easily see. You have lines crossing on the Meissner's corpuscle, but here they're more kind of swirly or up and down for the Krauss's end bulb. Other receptors. Um, this is a Ruffini. 
And the Ruffini nerve endings, I don't know if the debate is still going on, but there was a debate on what they actually sense. Um, some researchers were thinking they, saw it, they sensed um, temperature changes, and others were thinking they sensed pressure, and they may well be doing both. I don't know. I just want you to know the name. Ruffini. Uh, free nerve endings. There's free nerve endings here. And there should be some up close to the surface, but on this model I don't see those. Free nerve endings sense temperature changes and they sense pain. Um, and the free nerve endings, sometimes the nerve ending will come all the way up here to the basal layer and then branches of it will extend into the, into the epidermis so that you can sense pain and temperature changes out here on the surface. I think that's all the receptors and for this model I think, oh, types of burn. This is the back of the model or the burn side of the model. This would be um, first degree burn. Only the epidermis is kind of reddish compared to the other side. So this is first degree burn, kind of like a sunburn. This one is second degree burn. We've got some destruction to, or excuse me, not some destruction. We have the epidermis completely destroyed by the uh, burn. And then we have the dermis also affected by the burn. Another good indicator, and I love that they put this on this model, is these little blisters, the little yellow blistery stuff. So second degree burn almost always produces blisters. Third degree burn, the epidermis is destroyed, the dermis is also destroyed, and we're into sub-Q tissues. So third degree burn is the worst. And that is about it for this model. Um, look for another video for the other models that are for this lab. Thank you for watching.